and welcome back to the Velveteen Duck. In today's video, I'll walk you through the basics of the full moon event, including the important champions and bosses you get to fight. First things first, the full moon event is played out on a map called Varholm. During the time when the event is not running, when you use a realm path to Varholm, you enter Varholm during the day. If you use the exact same realm path when the event is running, you enter Varholm during the night. It's important to know which map you'll be entering, as the monsters, drops, and si even simply whether or not you can complete the map will depend on this factor. If it's your first ever full moon event, start playing the map during the daytime. There's a quest line that takes three full iterations of the full moon event to complete in order to unlock all the features, so have a little patience. During the daytime, farm the gnomes for silver essences. Don't forget to pick up a few wolfsbane plants along the way. Then head to the Silver Moon Mine to farm Silver Pebbles. Silver Pebbles can be found in barrels hidden along the way, and also dropped by Gaetir the Summoner, who is marked on the map with a red skull. Speaking of Gaetir the Summoner, there's a few things to look out for when you're fighting him. Firstly, he will always engage by charging onto you, so if you don't have high defenses, you need to remember to back off. Secondly, you need to focus on killing Gaetir, and not the Draugr that he summons. If you kill the Droger first, he's just going to spawn a new one. A little tip for the spellweavers out there, the Droger can be mind controlled. During the night time, which is when the event actually runs, you'll now need to equip Silver Essences in order to damage monsters inside Varholm. The melee wolves have attacks that apply to bleed effects, so you may need a debuff removal talent. As well, there are champions called Moon Howlers on the map. Be sure to stun these champions when fighting them, or a single howl will completely drain your resources, which can be crippling for a damage dealer class. Finally, at the end of the map you'll encounter the altar. You'll need a vial of blood to summon Vargolf at the altar. Only one vial is needed per party, so playing in a group is a pretty good idea. Let's take a moment here to examine Vargolf a little bit closer. Despite being considered a boss, he actually more closely resembles a champion as he lacks the typical three phases and he, you can also break his armor right from the start. As well, you can continuously stun this guy. His basic attack is to swing his weapon that releases a single icy projectile that can be easily sidestepped. Special attacks include a howl to summon some ghostly werewolves that all shoot icy projectiles that need to be dodged, and a berserk mode in which he spams all of his attacks faster. Once Vargolf has been vaporized, you now have a choice to make. You can decide if you want to take the portal that appears to Blood Moon over Varholm, or you can go back to the Silver Moon Mine. The deciding factor is whether or not you have enough shining silver essences. Remember all that wolfsbane and silver pebbles that you collected? You should also have a claw of Vargolf from Vargolf that you just killed. You can turn this in uh, using a quest with John Sunlair for some shining silver essences. You'll need this equipped in order to damage anything in Blood Moon over Varholm. In Blood Moon over Varholm, you will see three champions marked with red skulls on the map. Those are the only three things you need to kill to trigger the appearance of the Blood Mage. As such, many players will opt to just dash through all the mobs and kill those three specific monsters in order to save essences. Now, onwards to the topic of the Blood Mage. The Blood Mage is a true boss with three phase setup of armor break immunity from 100% to 60% HP, increased armor from 59% HP to 30% HP, and both icons reappearing below 30% HP. He also has an additional passive ability, immunity to bleed effects. His basic attack is to shoot a bloody orb with his two-handed staff. His attack speed is fairly quick, so this can be quite difficult to dodge, but not impossible. Blood Mage can also go into a Berserk mode, which is denoted by what I call the Angry Red Lines, in which he attacks faster and hits harder. He will also summon werewolves and chubby slimes capable of healing him just by being in his vicinity. These can be mind controlled by a spell weaver, but do so with caution because of his next skill. Blood Mage can cast a bloody orb that will stick to an allied target, including summons, mind controlled targets, and players alike. When this orb explodes, 
if you are within range of the Blood Mage, he will heal up a massive amount of HP, which is a huge waste of essences and time. As well, watch out as a Blood Mage can teleport. So just because he walked out of range doesn't mean he won't teleport after you to make life harder. The last skill that he has is sending out a Bloody Red Wave. If it hits the werewolves and chubby slimes he summons, he will heal. In other words, if you have tons of damage, you can focus on the Blood Mage only. If you don't, you need to kill off his summons or block their passage so they can't get closer to him to contribute to the Blood Wave and heal him up. Since I've reviewed all of Blood Mage's skills, let's take a look at how the fight goes. The last little part of the full moon event of Worthy Note is the Cursed Amphorae. This can spawn in either Varholm or Blood Moon over Varholm. The moment you click the Amphorae, a sprite called the Crystallized Curse will spawn that you need to kill within 30 seconds or it'll disappear and you receive nothing. Fortunately, you don't need to use Silver Essences or Shining Silver Essences to kill it. Instead, swap to your usual Essences and use that instead. The sprite will summon skeletons. These don't drop anything of interest, but they do hit quite hard. Be warned, the taunt from summons such as the guardian are ignored by both the sprite and the skeletons. The skeletons also cannot be mind controlled. They do, however, still obey the dragonite's taunt skills. With some luck, you might get the black wolf mount after killing the sprite. And with that said, I've covered all the important points of the full moon event. If you liked what you saw in this guide, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you again later this week for Callus.